Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about the Vivanco SC1112, which I've had for a number of years. I don't even know how I got hold of it. Um, what this thing is basically used for is if you have, like here, you can see here that says CD in. If you have a CD player and you're trying to hook up a portable cassette recorder, or, you know, a so called ghetto blaster or boombox, and the unit you're trying to hook this up to, it only has phono inputs, not line in or aux or something like that. And what this thing does, it attenuates the signal because the, your phono circuit in your in your radio or whatever, your stereo cassette recorder, that's not going to be, be able to handle such a high level signal coming direct from the CD player. You're going to overload it. So what this does, it attenuates the signal, makes it lower, and also, uh, not too long ago, I did a video on RIAA equalization. That's when, like for example, when records are made, say I'm talking about the phono input now, when records are made, what happens is the, the bass is attenuated, it's made lower, and the treble, basically the highs are boosted. And when it goes through the, in through your, um, your your phono preamp section of your radio or say stereo receiver amplifier what happens is the opposite thing the um, bass gets boosted and the treble basically the trebles are dropped down the treble the treble is attenuated your highs are attenuated is what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say uh, now if what I said was true when we feed in a square wave directly from the audio generator um, through this thing here, through this Vivanco, and uh, of course hook it up to the phono input, and then hook up a scope probe across the speaker output, we should be getting a square wave too, which we would not get if we didn't have in this, um, if we did not have this in basically in the system, because um, you, if you remember what I said about the phono preamp, the basically the bass is boosted and the treble is attenuated and say if you were playing music or something from your mp3 player or um, say your phone or something like that or your CD player that would already be equalized basically um, so what would happen you'd, you'd get a normal sound going in but coming out you'd have a sound where it would have much more bass and your trebles would be attenuated. It might sound might sound boomy and uh, I guess you'd call it mushy or something like that, which you wouldn't which you wouldn't want. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the this pioneer stereo receiver here to demonstrate that because the frequency response all of the boom boxes normally it's not that it's not that great and it's just gonna be easier to see what I'm talking about if I do it basically this way. So what we do then is of course here we got our leads coming from the audio generator and what are we going to do? Okay we need something we need a cable going in here and hooking up to there. Let me go ahead and find one. Okay so let's just take one of these. I'm gonna do just one channel. So again, this is this is the other end. Of course, the shorter cables you can use the better, but I gotta make do with basically what I got. And then we're gonna go ahead and just plug this in here. So, and then we take this other end that goes into the phono input. So, we got coming out of here. Um, we got the alligator clips on the end of here, and that's just going into a regular, these regular RCA type, um, this regular RCA type cable here. So, I plug that in. And let me go ahead and um, turn everything on to get it ready. 
and here we can see the output now the square wave I mean it's not perfect either could have something to do with the phono preamp here or it could have something to do with that Vivanco SC112 um, but you can see it's would be definitely looking a lot better than for example let, let me go ahead and feed the, a square wave directly into the phono input and you can see the difference now this is a pretty fair reproduction of the signal that actually came in from the signal generator and went all the way through this receiver here went through the phono preamp and then the main amp and came out uh, through the loudspeaker wires now let me go ahead and take the Vivanco that um, little inverse or reverse RIA equalization there a little unit let me go ahead and take that out of the circuit now here you can see the difference in the signals now I've got the audio generator it's going straight into the phono preamps and you can see it's not looking good at all um, at least when we had that uh, Vivanco SC112 hooked up we got a pretty uh, approximate reproduction of the original that's now now maybe uh, one can see now what where the problem lies and what the problem would be if you don't um, do this properly now a few weeks ago I did a phono preamp test um, I wanted to see if the equalization curve was accurate which in the which I did the equalization test I did it with the Pioneer receiver and the bass would have been boosted and the trebles would have been dropped they would have been attenuated which was in fact actually what happened so but now since I have if I would do you put the Vibanko in there the inverse or reverse equalization uh, circuit basically if I were to get if I were to make myself a reference again at a thousand Hertz then what what I should get I should get a completely flat line from my beginning frequencies wherever I think I started out at uh, 30 Hertz and went all the way up to 15,000 that should be that should be flat not like this one because it, because uh, again the square wave that came out looked almost just like the square wave that came in so um, the equalization basically it's already been it's been done so that curve should be flat so now I am going to run this through all the frequencies from 20 to 20,000 Hertz to see if I was in fact um, correct with what I've been mumbling about again the setup is the output from the audio generator my reference here is going to be again it's going to be what is this here 10 times 100 a thousand Hertz it's going to be a sine wave I'm feeding that into this here into this Vivanco this attenuator and um, inverse or reverse um, RIAA um, input here and that is going to go into the phono input in fact I've got one of the channels hooked up only I'm doing one channel and the signal I'm taking here from mine is the record um, the re tape record output uh, mine it just says rec on there REC and um, it could just be out to labeled like that um, I'm taking that from there because this is independent of all the tone controls now you would not see anything uh, if I went ahead and messed with the tone controls now bass treble or even the volume control uh, nothing would nothing would happen again uh, I don't want to get repetitious here but you gotta make sure your audio generator is capable of putting out the same 
output over the complete frequency range not that it drops and you don't know about it because that's going to make your uh, it's going to make your measurements false so that, that's got to be monitored too or you have to make sure beforehand that your um, audio generators actually capable of doing that and um, right now I'm feeding about 2.5 millivolts RMS into the phono uh, input and if we look here on top let me just go ahead and shut the camera off and take this a level higher as you can see here's the reference the 150 millivolts I'm on the 0.3 volt scale which is 300 millivolts so uh, I'm about half full scale which is always a good place to take a reading and this is my reference is 1000 Hertz sine wave so now I'm going to go ahead and go down to 20 Hertz and this here the pointer here the needle should move very much um, got to disregard what's down here because we're taking one reading relative to the other reading this is not we're not concerned with any kind of absolute values so if we were to go down here it would be minus six um, six point five so it shouldn't I don't remember exactly um, what it is with this receiver how much they spec it for whether it was um, 0.5 I think it was 2.5 dB I'm not really sure uh, anyways I'd have to look at the paperwork and all and start my computer up and all it's too much of a hassle this is just to get a general idea of what I'm talking about um, so let me go down to I'm at a hundred Hertz now I see it went up a little bit but not very much that would be um, it just would be and minus 5 and that would be minus 5.5 .5, and that would be minus 6 yep so it's not wouldn't be very much it would be like half a, half a DB there so um, let me go ahead and that's a hundred now I'm gonna go ahead and take it all the way down to 20 Hertz okay down 20 and you can see it's staying pretty steady which means what I had talked about earlier has been correct so far um, not like when I did that one the phono preamp test where I had to monitor it every time because I was plotting everything on a on a uh, on a graph okay now I'll take it up to now I'm on the times 100 scale, 100 times 20, and of course I just lost my, uh, must, I'm not hooked up anymore correctly, let me go ahead and back in a second, okay, back, and I still got, um, do I got contact here, yep, I thought maybe the wire came off, so right now I'm feeding in 2000 Hertz and the needle should stay steady all the way up to 20,000 Hertz I'm at uh, right now I'm at 10,000 Hertz let me take a look here okay and now I'm going all the way up to 20,000 Hertz that's the human um, audio spectrum or human audio range I'd call it and you can see that the needle has been playing has been pretty steady again anything any discrepancies could be due either to your audio generator fluctuating depending upon your frequency or could be problem of course um, with your with your receiver or amplifier but it seems like this unit doesn't have any problems I mean there's no wide swings you know it's not like the needles going way down here and, and dropping like 5 dBs or whatever that's not that's not the case at all so um, that's basically that's how you would do that test